Hello everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. Hopefully you're having a beautiful day. We are streaming live here via the web. Our topic is the absolute worst time to drink coffee. Over 2 billion cups of coffee. People are drinking daily throughout this world. Coffee is good for you. I will not put it down. You can check my video out that I did on coffee uh, quite a bit a uh, time ago. Uh, very interesting topic. There's a lot of great things. I will tell you that it is good for you. But the topic that I'm going to talk about tonight or today, regardless of where you are, is the absolute worst time to drink coffee. Now, I'm going to go through this quick. I need to explain why I'm bringing this topic up. I want you to understand the physiology of it. Instead of me just telling you in a minute, I want you to understand so you can educate other people, which will help them as well. Okay, let's move right on to it. Uh, this is what we're talking about, the old coffee. Now, understand we're talking about coffee. Uh, most people get up first thing in the morning, uh, jump for that coffee, regardless of what's in their body. And they just want to drink that coffee to get that kick, to get that high. Uh, but the important thing that I want you to understand that we're going to be talking about is about cortisol. Cortisol is a very important home hormone. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, how this thing works within our body during the different times of the day and how it allows us to fall asleep. But this hormone keeps us awake and alert. And the first thing in the morning, it is the highest. And this is what peps our body up. This is what gets us fired up to get up for the day. And what people are doing is they're taking their cup or drinking their cup of coffee at the time when they're most alert, when this cortisol level is the highest. And that's what's causing problems of jitteriness and anxieties and rebound and all other kinds of problems. So uh, let's go into a little bit about the cortisol chemistry. This is the chemistry of cortisol. You're asking, what is it? Well, this is the most important part that you're going to learn is understand that stress is a primary condition of life. We can't live without it, but this cortisol is what releases from the adrenal cortex. Let's move over here. Uh, releases from the adrenal cortex. It's a stress hormone. Uh, it does many, many things, which I'll go into. You can just read this here. Uh, but it affects our whole endocrine system, all the hormones, including our thyroid hormone, which regulates metabolism, our insulin, which regulates blood sugar, our sex hormones, which reg regulates our estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, uh, our menstrual cycles, our menopause. It has a profound effect on our digestion. It affects our neurotransmitters, our brain chemicals. It affects our mood. It affects our energy, our mental clarity, our focus, and our sleep. And I'm going to tell you why millions of people are having problems falling asleep. And I'm going to explain to you, and you're going to see it. And you're going to say, wow, I never knew that. Uh, by the way, uh, cortisol cues our body um, for many things. Like, um, it, it, let me go here, if, how it holds fat. Actually, I want to jump the gun. Let's go here. Uh, if you look here, uh, how it affects directly with the pancreas, uh, how it can hold on to fat. Uh, giving people a hard time losing weight. But when you get this foggy feeling, this fatigue feeling, which is quite common uh, after people will drink coffee, um, these cortisol, this cortisol affects, by the way, our blood pressure, affects our lungs, our circulation, our muscles, our bones. It does so much for us. And the problem here, and I'm going to move around a little bit, if we come here in the body, First of all, I just want you to see the importance of how cortisol works. By the way, the DHEA is, is released from the enteropituitary. It works hand in hand with the hypothalamus and it circulates in the bloodstream uh, to tell how much cortisol is, is in the bloodstream, when it should be diminished. It's a whole complex endocrine cycle. But if you just look at the uh, adrenal glands here on the essential bodily functions, uh, that's what I really want you to, to have an understanding how important this cortisol is because when the cortisol levels get thrown off, this is the major problem. Let's move on to the uh, circadian cycle. Uh, this is our circadian rhythm and cortisol. Now, this is what we're here for. You need to really understand what is going on. Um, when If you look in the morning, okay, we're looking here about, and I want to go ahead and give you the time so you can understand this. I'll have this written out for you. You can come back to it. 
But if you look right about at 7, 7.30 in the morning, if we go to bed normally like 11 o'clock, we get seven, eight hours sleep, approximately seven to eight o'clock in the morning, our cortisol level is the highest. And then it starts to drop. Then it comes up again about 12.30 to one, it drops. And it comes up for the last time at about 6.37, and then it drops. Now, I'm gonna come back to here uh, and look at this here, the best time to drink coffee. Uh, people are drinking it. I'm going to come back here. Uh, first thing in the morning before they eat, they get right up there about 7 to 7.30. And what happens is they start drinking their coffee when the cortisol levels are the highest. Now, what that does, that pumps up cortisol level even worse. And this is where the problem comes into. So um, the... The important thing I wanted to mention right here, one second here. Uh, the important thing is that when you're when you're taking uh, caffeine into your body and your cortisol levels are the highest, eventually your cortisol levels are going to start becoming diminished. And as they become diminished, you're going to start relying more on the caffeine or the coffee, and that's going to be an addiction for you. And you're going to have a hard time breaking it because the cortisol levels are never going to do the job for you. If you go back here and you look at the correct time that uh, to drink coffee, that's why you need to look at the charts. The best time to drink coffee is when those cortisol levels come down. So when those cortisol levels come down, that will pep you up when the cortisol levels will not be affected. But if you're drinking your coffee at the high part uh, right here, up at 7 o'clock, 7.30, uh, you're drinking it here about 12, 12 or 1 o'clock. You're drinking it about 6.30 to 7. Uh, you're going to have lots of problems because this is going to make you jittery. This is going to make you anxious. This is going to make you fatigued. This is going to actually burn out your cortisol levels because that is when the peak is highest. And eventually what's going to happen is you're only going to start relying on the caffeine because your cortisol levels are not going to work the way they ideally should work. See, the purpose, uh, let me come back here, the purpose of our cortisol levels staying high and going low at the end of the day, high in the morning, end of the day, is because look here, if we look at the end of the day, they're the lowest that's when our melatonin is secreted, our serotonin, our dopamine. This is what allows us to sleep. So we don't want to take our coffee or drink coffee late at night because that's going to go ahead and increase cortisol levels up again. The body's trying to diminish it. And if we're taking more coffee later, then we're in this stress cycle. So if we come over here, uh, let's look at high cortisol levels. And I'll come back to this because I want you to really get the grasp on this. Look what the high cortisol levels do here. Uh, food cravings. It, regulate, it increases the blood sugar. Lots of brain fog. Uh, lots of irritability. Uh, hair loss. Skin, skin conditions. If you're drinking your coffee on an empty stomach first thing in the morning, you're going to have gastritis. You're going to have digestive issues. You're going to have potential ulcers. Uh, you're going to have... Uh, a lot of irritation, gastrointestinal problems. People are saying, well, it doesn't bother me. I'm telling you that the wrong time to drink coffee is on an empty stomach. The wrong time to drink coffee is when your uh, uh, cortisol levels are high uh, because of the fact that you're going to burn out the, the pancreas, the, the, the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are, are, are all, it's in a rhythm, it's a circadian rhythm that's supposed to work a certain way so you can sleep correctly. I can guarantee that people who are drinking lots of caffeine are going to have a hard time sleeping. They're going to be irritable. They're going to have a lot of palpitations. Uh, you're going to have lots of different symptoms. So you need to make sure that uh, you are actually drinking your coffee at these times. It's extremely important because otherwise you're messing up your melatonin, your sleep hormone, you're messing up the communication of the brain and the endocrine system. Uh, and the purpose of getting sleep is to build you, uh, 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 to get your immune system strong, to help protect and repair uh, your DNA, uh, protect against disease, because when your cortisol levels are high, your immune system becomes significantly weak. And you cannot afford 
to have a weak immune system because that is going to be an increased risk of heart attacks, cardiovascular systems, uh, diseases, and other conditions like that. Understand that if you are also taking your uh, coffee uh, at high cortisol levels, it's going to increase the dehydration. It's going to make you more fatigued. You're going to get that rebound. Uh, as I mentioned, acid reflux, potential IBS. It's going to promote a lot of irritability, insomnia, bad disposition. It's going to make you moody. It's not good for you. Uh, this, these are all studies that are out. You can Google all this uh, good information. I know it's a little complex, so I'm trying to keep it simple for you. Remember that drinking coffee enhances the regu and regulates your productivity at work, at home, with your kids. It affects your appetite. It affects your normal bodily uh, functions. Um, it just does so many important things. And we, don't, we can't afford to make or develop these kind of problems. So we don't want to uh, be dependent upon uh, coffee when it comes down to doing it, doing it at the wrong time. Remember that coffee is a drug. Uh, and when I talk about coffee, we're mainly relating to caffeine. I want to speculate uh, and mention that uh, caffeine is what affects the cortisol levels. We don't want to drink it at the highest levels. I challenge everyone out there, if you start drinking your caffeine when the cortisol levels are lower on the low side, it will give you that up, but it won't give you those other effects. It won't burn you out because right now uh, you, your pancreas and your, 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 your rhythm that's going on with your brain are all, your whole endocrine system is all functioning for a reason. So it, it can, your, your cortisol levels can come down later at night. If you're pumping up your cortisol levels with caffeine, not only through coffee, but anything through caffeine, uh, it's going to throw you off. You're going to have nightmares. You're going to be irritable. You're not going to sleep. And then when you wake up in the morning, instead of your cortisol levels being the highest, uh, it's going to be off the chart because you are going to be stressed out. When you're stressed out, your immune system goes down. You're going to get sick every time. You can't beat it. So uh, it's important to have cortisol. It's not important. Uh, let's say it's dangerous to have wrong cortisol levels. So uh, this is a very difficult topic to really go into depth because I have to really show you deep in the physiology. But I think that I made my point. And the point is, uh, looking back at the chart, you can get, get the judd of it. You can actually do a little homework uh, on here. Uh, through Google, and I hope this will give you a little bit of background. Um, I ask you to subscribe uh, to my channel if you haven't. Uh, check me out, Motivational Doc, on Facebook as well. Just leave your comments below. There are a lot of people who are going to want to comment on this. I want to stress one thing. If you just tuned in, I am a believer in in uh, coffee. Now, one thing I mentioned, I want to mention, I didn't mention, if you are going to drink coffee, don't drink the cheap coffee. Drink quality coffee because it's much, much healthier for you. It has great antioxidants in there. It's great for your liver. There's no question. It prevents liver cancer. It's reversed liver cancer in many cases. Uh, there are great positive effects on coffee. So there is no way I'm here to knock coffee. I'm not knocking it, but I am knocking it for those people who get up first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. If you're going to drink coffee, drink it after your meal because it works differently. It metabolizes differently. If you take it directly with no food in your body, right at the spot before you eat, when those cortisol levels are high, you're looking for problems. You, you may say, I've been doing it for a long time, but I promise you, if you stop, you're going to have major withdrawal because what's happening is your cortisol levels start to shut down. So in other words, you think that cortisol levels are going high when you drink, and they are. But if you continue on that mode over time, it doesn't go up anymore. So in other words, you get up in the morning and you rely on your coffee because your cortisol levels don't give you that energy when you get up in the morning. So you get up fatigued. You say, where's my cup of coffee? And I know millions of people are there right now. But the only way you're going to get that uh, adrenals, adrenals to start kicking in, you may need to go on a, a, adrenal formulas. You may need to start uh, detoxing and get your system and cutting back on the coffee. Go to decaf if you have to. Uh, but I want to mention one thing about decaf. When it comes down to gastritis, problems in the stomach, the worst thing we can do is drink coffee on an empty stomach because it causes increased hydrochloric acid, increased acidity. Increased acidity can cause wearing and tearing and sloughing 
of the of the stomach as well as the intestine. Uh, so I want to let you know that it's just not caffeinated coffee. It's any coffee that can affect the inflammation and increase acid in the stomach. Okay. When we're talking about the cortisol, we're talking about caffeine. I hope I really you really get that message. It's important. The cortisol relates to caffeine. That caffeine is what is where the problem we're talking about. Anyways, I want to say blessings to everyone out there. Uh, this will be posted on my channel. And again, uh, leave your comments below. Uh, any feedback, uh, even if you're on Facebook, that you want to leave any reviews, hopefully leave the reviews if you are getting progress and seeing progress from the videos I've been putting out on my channel. Um, I love to read those and I love other people to read those as well because it's quite enticing and exciting that people are getting well out there. That's most important. God bless everyone. We'll catch up with you real soon. Bye-bye now.